All right, people, welcome back to another episode of Final Fantasy III. So, we've made it through the Ancients' Maids. Like, honestly, this place is so boring, there's nothing here. So I just opted to, like... So I just opted to not show off a lot of it. Because the Crystal Tower is what we all want to see. Like, this place is deadly. You don't even get to... You don't even get to save. That's fake difficulty. That's fake news. Like... You don't... You don't get to save when once you enter this place. So, once you're in here, there's no getting out. So, let's, let's go. Let's go. The music is epic. That that's the reason for this pause. That music was epic as fuck. Really? I should have just went there. I was thinking like treasure. Treasure is good. Oh, that was that was weird. That was netting, fuck up. But yeah, these these encounters are nothing short of ridiculous. And they only get harder from here. Like these these guys will waste no time Kicking your ass and making sure you know the term grind, bitch. Like, they they play no games. Like, every every encounter in this place pretty much can go twice. And Essentially, they just they just hit hard. Like they hit real hard. I still have no good armor for myself, so that's not an excuse. To say that they hit really hard, more like me just being incompetent. But they, but they just hit hard, really hard. Like you can't, you can't scoff at any of these encounters. They will kick your ass. Like who would have thought, <laughs> the first boss of the game. We one-shotted with an arctic wind, or two-shotted with an arctic arctic wind, would come back with a vengeance. Look, I'm not I'm not a grinding game. You can't make me. You can't make me. I refuse. Luckily for us, that boss is weak against weak against uh, ice, so just you know use ice. Now the key, the Eureka key that Dorga gave us, Doga, the Eureka key that Doga gave us opens this door, which takes us to the Forbidden Land. So we're in the Forbidden Land, and I had to cut out because I had business to take care of, and I did a little grinding on the side, pretty much. So here, we finally got some equipment, some equipment that'll, oh, never mind, we already got a Fuma Guard. So yeah, now now we have two. So if I wanted two ninjas, I could run two ninjas. But I like Camus the way he is, even if he looks badass as a ninja. I have no reason to I have no reason to use two ninjas. Everything hits hard at the end of the game, so 
there's no point in not having someone that can effectively tank damage and use defend to basically block block when when your guys are almost dead I think I think these guys are like the weakest of the encounters down here Um, they, like, honestly, everything, everything in your endgame just hurts, but these guys, they're kind of worthless. I think they can cast magic, I can't remember which, which magic they cast. It's good to just hit them and go on your way. They're weak against fire. Or is it resistance against... Thunder? No, no, no. They're weak against fire. Because that, that did massive amounts of damage. Because if it were Percival, that would have done a lot more than Rebecca would have. Yeah. So fire's their weakness, they go down like Prisses. And this being the like final place for side questing, I, I just deem like the Forbidden Land Eureka as as the big side quest dungeon before the final boss. You're basically getting all the best equipment you could ever ask for and you're getting all the ultimate weapons and with all the encounters you're gonna get buff so you'll basically be ready to take on take on the final dungeon and still have to grind for the final boss that's so hilarious even after all this, I still had to grind for the final boss. Granted, I didn't do as much grinding as... I didn't do as much grinding as you'd think. It was just... It was more of a, like... Pain in the ass. Look, I see that thing right there. I look at it, and I'm thinking, how do I get to the treasure chest? Like... Is there an invisible bridge somewhere? Is there, is there somewhere I need that chest? It's got a ribbon, man! That chest has a ribbon! Look, so I basically take advantage of that cut, and I figure out how to get over there. But of course, I forget to turn on the recording until the battle flashes in. So yeah, Ninja. This guy... He ain't nothing special. He has the ability all ninjas have. If they hit you, they have a random chance of hitting, getting a status ailment off on you. Miss. Oh. Huh. That didn't do as much as I thought. Damn you, Quake. Like, yeah, Ninja Ninja goes twice, but he's not scary. Yeah, that that's the word. He's not scary. Like, he doesn't... He doesn't hurt. I mean, he, he hurts. Look, like, Camus now has both blind and poison on him. If I had a Suna, I would have dealt with all my problems right there. But I don't. I mean, I the, the reason why I didn't even bother was because I had so many antidotes and eye drops. 
but of course, with me having to grind near the end of the game, where there was a lot of ninjas in the Crystal Tower, I ended up running through that supply. In fact, I don't even think I have much of those to go around right now. So, I pretty much run out before we get to the world, the world of darkness. Luckily, the EXP you get here is insane. It's gross, man. Like, the amount of grinding you can do here is absolutely absurd. That, and you can farm so much money. Like, these enemies here are crazy. Like, they, they were, like, specifically meant, meant to, meant for you to grind off of. Yeah, see, I only have five antidotes and three, three eye drops. Like, there's next to no, no reason why I shouldn't have Asuna. I think it was just me being silly, why I didn't get Asuna. Cause I just basically, I basically put fake difficulty on me. I put fake difficulty on myself, because later on I won't have as I won't even have eye drops or antidotes, so I've got to rely on not getting poisoned and one-shotting the enemies that come in my way. But whatever, we're not here for that. We're here to get ourselves some ultimate weapons. You're a shuriken. Shurikens are absolutely busted. Like, shurikens are 200 damage weapons that can only be thrown. And pretty much if you throw them, it's an instant quad nine. Like, you, like, at job level one as a ninja, it has a percentage chance but the higher in level you go it it basically becomes guaranteed so you're basically guaranteed max damage with shuriken now it's time to get ourselves some ultimate weapons so this is Amon Amon it's nothing like Remember Hein? Hein from earlier in the game? Well, this guy has the barrier shift stuff too. But guess what? He doesn't show off in this battle. Which is absolutely insane. I mean, the only. Like. Yeah, this guy. This guy is only sorta of scary. Like, he can. He can do a lot of damage. But. Nah. Hey look, max damage. Like, he has a lot of spells, but he's not overly scary. Like, fear doesn't strike in my heart when he attacks me with his cape. Now if he were the Matador, then I'd be crying for my mother. Like, look at that. Mage tanks? Mage tanks? His, his physical attacks just don't hurt. But Hein, Hein, Amon himself has, like, absurdly high defenses. So essentially one thing you could do is get a Viking and you can use Provoke. Like, if you're using a Viking at this point, you should probably have enough job level to, like, cut his defense to shreds. Like... 
Like, his defense will basically be null and void, and you can go in. But hey, I don't I don't need I don't need no Vikings. I don't need no anything. All I need is faith and haste. Faith, haste, and a lot of magic. That's that's pretty sad. Um Well Yeah. I feel like I feel like I should have varied up my strategies more. But grinding for job level isn't fun. And I refuse to do it. I'm not like I don't care about grinding. I'll grind for several thousand years if I have to to get something if I if I feel like doing it. But I will never I will never ever go out of my way to grind if I don't want to. Because that's just not fun. Like, if I'm grinding to make a really ridiculous setup, then fine, I'll, I'll do that. Only if it's fun. But if my, my strategy right here ain't broke, I ain't gonna fix it. Uh, slang. If if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like there, look, I took him out. Like there are better ways to do it, but fine. It's not like this battle was it's not like the battle was a slog, so I'm not even worried. I mean, you could probably skip this weapon. Depending on what your party party's gonna be like. Like the mooring blade isn't even worth it. Cause it's not as strong as what you like, it's not even as strong as the kuki kiku iki yeah. Uh look at me being ignorant. It's not even as good as the Kiku Ichimonji. Like the moon ring the moon ring blade. I'm sorry. I thought it would have been a better a better weapon. Like every every other ultimate weapon is really good. Like Literally every every other weapon is amazing. Especially for any like the party setups you have now. Like the one I have now is a really good party setup. Like look at that. The Omni Rod, that's good for Percival because he's the basically the ultimate black mage. You can also equip a ribbon. Dude, why? Oh, because I wanted to put it on someone else. Like, eventually you're gonna have more ribbons than you know what to deal with. And by more than you know how to deal with, I mean, I mean, you get one, you get one in that chest as the dungeon starts. And then near the final boss, you basically get four more so you have five like there's no point to having more than four so you have more than you know how to deal with now here's a dangerous boss here's a dangerous boss that I absolutely decimate but this lady plays no games she's slinging plenty of she slings plenty of white magic, also paired up with the fact that she can go three times. So that's one, 
That's two. And that's three. So if she whips out her dangerous white magic, because she can use holy, plus two attacks, anything, anything, even Rebecca will die. Like, nobody, nobody's going to be able to stand up to this lady. So I think, fuck it, I can buy Shuriken. Maybe. And <laughs> I decided, let's go out. Because this Kun Kunoichi plays no games. Like, we're getting down to the wire. Please leave my people alone. And then that's kill that kills it. She doesn't have much health, provided you can do enough damage. But boy howdy, she will mess your team up if you're not if you're not safe. And then hey, look, we get the best dark blade in the game, the Masa Moon. So let's slap that on me and Let's go on our merry way. We're a final attack of 247. That looks like a finished set if I've seen one. So let's move on. Sorry, random encounter. I ain't got time for you. We got ultimate weapons to get. So along with a lot of ultimate weapons, they basically hook you up with plenty of elixirs, more elixirs than you're ever going to need, and lots of phoenix downs cuz they know they know that they're they know that this final dungeon design is absolutely ludicrous. Like I don't I couldn't tell you what they were thinking like the design the design is just it's called blooded, that's what it is. It's just mean. So, if you heard that, like, quick cut, I got, um, I got distracted for a second, so I basically cut back to where, um, I started the fight. So, the general. He's... Okay, I guess. He's like one of the like again, he's one of those bosses that isn't too dangerous on paper. Like he can do he can do mild damage and it hurts. Like he hurts, but other than physical attacks, he has nothing going for him. I think I think yeah he kills me. No, he doesn't. Like he he has he has magic attacks too. Like I thought that was super cool. Like they they threw they threw magic attacks on this guy and they can they can be a little threatening. Like this dude is threatening but underwhelming. Like he's got all the makings of a tough boss. But, other than that, he's kinda... But he came out as bland. But doesn't, doesn't the Excalibur choose who's worthy? Why are you guarding it? Ow, multicast bio, please. It did more damage to Percival than it did <laughs> me. And I have such mewling defense that it doesn't even matter. But yeah, by by underwhelming boss. You left no impact on me.
Huzzah, we have obtained the Excalibur. And we know who that's going to. The only one worthy to wield it. Mr. Camus. Only a knight of true... Of true, um... Dang, I thought I was going to say something really awesome and poetic. It just didn't come out. Only a knight of true valor can wield such an awesome weapon. Oh, this... This is the point where I had to fuck up. Look, I'm staring at the weapon... And cut. So... I had a glitch, and lost that footage of that fight. The boss was sort of tough, but it was nothing that we couldn't handle. And basically, the Ragnarok sword that goes straight to that goes straight to Camus too, because Camus can wield that. So combining the Excalibur and Ragnarok, Camus is basically the hardest hitting member physically on our team. Like I think, yeah, he's pretty much hitting for 6,000 to 7,000 damage per hit, and the higher in level he goes, <laughs> he's just gonna, he's just, he just does quad nines. Like, literally, he'll do quad nines by the end of the game. Especially with that haste. With haste, he'll be doing a lot of damage. He'll be doing guaranteed, like, almost guaranteed quad nines. So, uh, I believe it's Sikla? Six, uh, Sit, uh, I don't know how to pronounce the... The Wolf of Wolves head thing. I don't know how to pronounce that name. Because I'm ignorant. But yes, this lady right here is a... She, she has a lot of white magic and a lot of... And physical attacks. Like... She'll, she'll vary it basically. She'll either she'll either do like two physicals, two magics, or she'll do one magic, one physical. And I got one shotted by Holy, so I was like, oh fuck! How much damage can she do against everyone else? Of course, she didn't get the chance because we were dangerous. But I, I didn't get the chance to revive myself. I was just kicking myself in the ass because it's like... I, I wanted that experience. Don't make me grind, game. I refuse. I refuse to let... I refuse to let you make me grind for something that doesn't make a difference. So I'll take that... Elder Staff, off your hands, thank you! The Elder Staff casts Kira in battle, in battle only. So, rip. Rip your use, especially at the end of the game. So yeah, we're basically done ultimate weapon hunting. Now here comes the fun stuff. There are no encounters in this place. Those two springs heal up your HP and revive your party members. So if they die, you know, you get a free thing. Get free heals. And these merchants sell the level 8 spells. They basically have the last spells of the game. So, Arise, Meteor, Flare, and Holy. That's all you need. Tornado and Death... Don't waste your time. There's no point. They don't affect bosses. And random encounters don't... Random encounters don't do anything. And then, hey, check that out. You can summon Odin, Leviathan, and Bahamut. So the the quests to get them 
are kind of null and void. Because you can just buy them. You can buy God, the God of the Ocean, and the King of Dragons. That's hilarious. Look, I have Reflect right there. Why don't I give it to her until the end? It's so silly of me, like, I don't... I don't get what I was thinking. But we're not done yet. There's one more guy. Right here, he sells shurikens. And crystal equipment, but... The only one that can equip that is Camus, and Camus is pretty much already pimped out in Crystal Equipment. So there's no point in buying that. Your money should be spent on shurikens. Don't waste your time! What am I thinking? Your money's better spent on shurikens, but this is the end of the episode. I'll see you guys next time.